going back to centralized entities in crypto, that does kind of play towards Charlie Munger's point a little bit, right? Three Arrows Capital founder Kyle Davies says FTX employees admitted to hunting Three Arrows Capital's positions. So yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, the the you know the missiles have been launched between these two. The co-founder of uh, Bankrupt Hedge Fund Three Arrows Capital says that FTX employees have admitted that the collapsed crypto exchange um, was hunting down the firm's positions. Uh, in a new interview on CNBC Squawk Box, Kyle Davies, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? I gotta go get this video because <laughs> this motherfucker. Kyle Davies of Three Arrows Capital is still not in custody, and he's doing fucking interviews on CNBC Squawk Box. Lol. Um, he says that FTX and its trading arm Alameda Research were able to collaborate in ways that wouldn't be permissible in other industries. Uh, he also claims that FTX employees have bragged about tracking down and liquidating Three Arrows Capital's positions. I mean, it's like, oh my god, like feel bad for for us because uh, you know it's like two kids, you know, getting called to the president's office and say, saying, well, yeah, he was doing shit that was worse. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, FTX and Alameda are two different separate firms. Uh, FTX is an exchange. Alameda is a trading firm. They have a similar ownership. It's coming out that they've shared information. They sat in the same room and they've commingled funds. Um, I've got recent employees of F FTX, which are bragging about hunting and liquidating our positions. Uh, this is not the way it's done in non-crypto communities. There's a clear segregation between an exchange and any kind of proprietary trading firms, which was apparently not the case, right? Yeah, that's very clear. But like, why are you going on Squawk Box to talk about this shit? I don't know. Um weird PR. Uh, FTX founder and former CEO Sam bankman fried responded to Davies' claims telling CNBC in a statement that he's surprised by the allegations coming from somebody who's still on the frickin' run. Um, I'm shocked that he's saying that. 100% disagree. It's extremely disappointing, irresponsible. I'm sad about what's happened with FTX over the past few weeks. I'm trying to do what I can to address that. I don't want to minimize that, but this is completely different and there's no truth to their allegations here. Oh, man. His parents are lawyers, you know, so, hey. Uh, yeah. Davies says Sam bankman fried misjudged the situation since Three Hours Capital's collapse helped contribute to an industry-wide meltdown that ultimately took FTX as a victim as well. Uh, he for sure misjudged the situation from the early days. We were their biggest critic as they got bigger and bigger, and we saw one of uh, some of their backers. We assumed that they cleaned up their act. We were just wrong. Interesting. Apparently, they were still sharing information, still trading against clients. They completely misjudged the situation. It was indeed after they took us down. There was a giant credit squeeze across the industry. And as lenders recalled their loans, that's what revealed the hole in their balance sheet and eventually led to this downfall as well. Lol. <laughs> oh, we, we, sh uh, we got it. We got to play this. We got to play this. Here, hold on a second. We got to play this shit. Um, Oh, man. Let's see here. Hold on. Let me pull it up here. Mm -mm. All right. Here we go. Henry Byer says, what are good wallets to hold Bitcoin in? Uh, a cold storage wallet. I would recommend, right? And if you have a nice cold storage, um, essentially uh, you own your own keys. So as long as you have your private keys, you are good. Exodus wallets, also not a shabby, not too shabby um, if you uh, you know are newer to crypto. But let's take a listen here. It's five minutes and 25 seconds. Let's see if we can listen on uh, 1x speed here. Am I, am I sharing sound? I don't know if I am. I think I'm probably not actually. Let's try that again. Oops. We are live. There we go. Which tab? Pick a tab, any tab, right? All right, there we go. Now let's go back. Oh, 
Circle is one of the most controversial names in crypto. The now bankrupt hedge fund was borrowing billions from crypto lenders, and as a result, played a central role in this summer's price meltdown. As one of its biggest bets collapsed, three arrows defaulted on those loans and faced cascading margin calls. Un unable to pay those three arrows, eventually filed for bankruptcy this summer. Joining us now is Kyle Davies, who's the co-founder of Three Arrows. Kyle, we appreciate your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So before we get to FTX, we have to talk about what's going on here with your fund. So Three Arrows, liquidators. <laughs> so we got to talk about your criminal activities first, sir. Um, so let's see how deep they get into this. Claim that you and your co-founder haven't been cooperating. Lawyers have said earlier this summer that your physical whereabouts were unknown ahead of certain court hearings. Where are you now and what are you doing to get your investors money back? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, I'm in Bali. Second of all, we've been contacted uh, by the liquidator and contactable the entire time. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. He's on uh, Epstein watch. <laughs> I I did not suicide myself, says Kyle Davies. Yeesh. Uh, every call, every email, every uh, video we, we've uh, attended with them. So, um, I, I mean, frankly, we've been cooperating the, uh, the, the whole way. Uh, just as uh, what, one point to that. The first every time I have a tell, I touch my face, I touch my nose, I touch my mouth, and I'm full of shit. First thing um, we actually did is in the first two weeks there was a major position which needed to be uh, exercised. It was a warrants position. Reminded the liquidator three times. They didn't even exercise it. So um, in my mind, I think there's a uh, like you know, a process that needs to be done, but we're here. We're, we're, co we're cooperating. We're, we're some of the biggest uh, creditors ourselves. It sounds like he said somebody behind him with a gun. He's like, yeah, we're, uh, we're, co we're cooperating. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it. Like, yeesh. Kyle, your firm filed for bankruptcy back in July. You haven't publicly mentioned FTX until this week. Why are we only hearing about these allegations now? Uh, we have mentioned. Because it makes me look better. I'm not the bad one anymore. <laughs> uh, we have mentioned it many times, but frankly, it, no one wanted to hear it. Um, if you recall, the, one of the biggest critics of us uh, right after um, our collapse was Sam Bankman Breed himself uh, of FTX. And we now know, um, as things are coming out, that he was probably covering up a lot of uh, things on his side. And it's also coming out that he hunted our positions. So. Um, it, I, I think it's one of those things that in the trueness of time, we will find out the truth and we're looking forward to justice. And Kyle, so explain that to us. You say- Well, looking forward to justice. It's just like, yeah. Um, playing the victim, baby. Uh, yeah. FTX and Alameda colluded to trade against clients. Your positions were hunted and liquidate, liquidated, as you put it. Walk us through that. And what evidence do you have? Um, so the um, a, a, everything's uh, coming out now, which is <laughs> what evidence do you have? Well, we were telling people about this before, but evidence is coming out now that I can say and just, you know, a lot of incongruency right there in that in that little bit of a pause. Uh, coming out now, which is why we're being a little bit more public, but um, they... we're being a little bit more public because, hmm, yeah, we want better PR, right? It's just like. Yeah, interesting. Trying to get brownie points, right? FTX and Alameda are two separate firms. FTX is an exchange. Alameda is a trading firm. Um, they have similar ownership. Um, it's coming out that they, you know, shared information um, and that they sat in the same room and that uh, I've got ex-employees uh, or recent employees of uh, FTX, which are bragging about hunting and liquidating our position. So um, th th this is not the way uh, in non-crypto um, companies, this is just not the way it's done, right? There's a clear segregation between an exchange and any any kind of proprietary trading firms, um, which was apparently not the case. Andrew. I mean, I will give Kyle one, one bit of credit here, you know, in terms of, you know, his uh, overall demeanor, right? It does seem like he is legitimately afraid, you know, but whether he's channeling that because he's getting hunted by different governments or, um, you know, uh, because he's legitimately scared of maybe both governments um, colluding with FTX, right? And maybe he's like, oh, shit, double whammy, don't know who to trust. You know, I, there, there's a little bit, I can kind of see that part, you know, a little bit, but, um, or he's just maybe afraid of getting caught with his own shit. So, uh, or maybe a little bit of everything. So, hmm, interesting. True, it's, it's Becky. Um, I take it you're not in Bali because of the G20. Are you there because Indonesia is one of seven countries that won't extradite you back to the United States? 
Nice question. <laughs> That's actually okay. CBC not pulling any punches there. I like it. I like it. Uh, no. Um, well, <laughs> for one, I, I, I haven't lived in the United States for like a decade. I've been in Asia. But uh, for two, no, it's just a good place to be. <laughs> oh, that was a great, a great answer. No, it's, a, it's just a great place to be because uh, of that. And Kyle, we do have a statement from Sam Bankman Freed on your allegations. We just want to read that to you. It's, he says, I'm shocked. He's saying that 100% disagree. It's extremely disappointing and irresponsible. I'm sad about what's happened with FTX over the past few weeks. And I'm trying to do what I can to address that. He says, I don't want to minimize that. But this is completely different. And he says, there's no truth to their allegations here. Your response to because this is what my lawyers told me to say. I played the fifth. That and question on why he would want to take down one of his biggest clients, but eventually that led to the demise of really a lot of other big players in the industry and eventually his own failure. He for sure misjudged the situation, right? Um, I think from the early days we were there. No, he didn't misjudge the situation at all. His, at all. his company just literally lost tens of billions of dollars. Yeah, you know. Biggest critic. Uh, I didn't even trade on their exchange for the first year and a half. Um, but uh, for, uh, you know, as, as they got bigger and bigger and we saw some of their backers, uh, we assumed that they cleaned up their act. And we were just wrong. We uh, uh, apparently, they were still sharing information, still trading against clients, and um, they completely misjudged the situation. It was indeed, uh, after they took us down, uh, the, there was a giant credit squeeze across the industry. And as lenders recalled all their loans, that's what revealed the hole in his balance sheet and eventually led to his, his downfall as well. So, oops. Today, Genesis halts withdrawals from its lending platform. Kyle Davies of Three Arrows. There we go. So, yeah, there we go. So the one thing that I thought was really, really interesting there was a lot of the comments that you guys are talking about here. But then one of the things that I thought was really, really interesting there was essentially, you know, he's just like, yep, you know, don't worry if it wasn't for FTX, right? Three arrows capital would still be solvent. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, Florian says the audacity, <laughs> uh, Karin says being more public because y'all found out lol. 